turn on the sex, that's what I say. Um, on that note, it is really my pleasure to introduce Matt Patterson tonight. Um, I just, Matt, Matt um, is a friend of mine and a wonderfully um, gifted artist. And I wanna tell you a little bit about him, how he studied art at the Art Institute of Boston. And he's an award-winning artist. He has books that he's published and his artwork, which we're going to be so lucky to see tonight. I like to think that it, it almost feels to me like it's gonna crawl off the page or slither off the page. It's so real and detailed and the artistry behind it is, is mind blowing. It's it's beautiful. And Matt really um, comes by this naturally. I think he was born to be a person who loved um, snakes and frogs and fish. And um, my first encounter with Matt, um, Matt's artwork was with a book that he did with his dad, The Freshwater Fish of New England, of the Northeast, right, Matt? Freshwater mm -hmm. Fish of the Northeast. Yeah, sure. um, I found this book about 10 years ago. I loved it so much. I didn't know Matt. The artwork was beautiful. And I found it extra appealing that um, it was a father-son collaboration. I gave it to my dad for his birthday that year. And we both still very much love that book. Um, tonight, we are so lucky to have award-winning artist and conservationist too, Matt Patterson here. Matt, Oh, oh, thanks, anyway. Susie. That was, that was a really nice intro. Um, so, like Susie said, I'm a wildlife artist. Um, there I am right there <laughs> with a turtle. It's a radiated tortoise. Selfie. Um, and so, you kind of mentioned this, Susie. One of the questions I'm, I'm asked all the time is, uh, like, when did I get into art and animals? And the answer is, there's no real moment. I've just kind of always been into it. Um, if you look to the left, that's me at the New England Aquarium. I think that's Myrtle, the turtle. I think she's been there since the 70s, so that makes sense. And I don't know, the picture on the right is blocked off for me, but that's me holding a snake. Can you see that? At least see, see my arm holding a snake. Um, so growing up, I was always out. I spent my summers like looking for turtles and snakes and fishing, and I was always drawing. So I've just been doing that my whole life. I guess I was born doing that. Here's a little drawing of mine, cool looking dinosaur, with a red stripe. <laughs> I don't know when this was, it was pretty early. So before first grade. Here is, I did this drawing, it was a stamp contest in third grade and it is a dinosaur. And if you look to the right too, I even wrote, for some reason I wrote, dinosaurs, they're back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that was about, but um, the stegosaurus. And here's another, a few more drawings, uh, T-Rex with pointy teeth and a really ferocious looking pig getting squeezed by a snake. <laughs> um, I think that on the left is third grade and on the right is probably like fifth grade. And so there's me little eating a candy apple with a fish and then there's me today. So um, I went to school at the Art Institute of Boston and I kind of still do the same stuff I used to do when I was little. I draw pictures of animals and I look for animals. And I even have some that on the left is me with my tortoise, Eddie, who uh, we've had for like 13 years, 14 years. She's a sulcata tortoise. And then on the right, that's last year, it's right around this time, that's me and my wife, Erin, and we're, we're patting a Galapagos tortoise named Spike in Florida. And he is, he was really friendly, he was really cool. Um, it's a really great experience. And then snapping turtles, these are kind of some recent pictures, one of my favorite turtles. I love looking, going out kayaking, looking for him in the spring. And here is, I figured I'd squeeze a snake in. Um, here's a milk snake, which are around here in the Northeast. So my art in the process. Um, so like I said, I do mostly reptiles and amphibians. Um, they're also called herps, uh, herpetology study of reptiles and amphibians. So if you hear me say the word herps, it's not a bad word. It just means reptiles and amphibians. <laughs> Um, and I think that they're really underrepresented in wildlife art. I mean, they're really important. They're really beautiful. Um, and they're really like mysterious to a lot of people. They're this spotted salamander. Um, 
they can live over 20 years is really amazing. I, you know, a kid could be looking at one and the salamander could be older. Um, I don't know if any of you, or probably a lot of you have done the salamander brigades. I don't know if you're doing it this year, if they're doing them because of COVID, but once they start back up, I definitely recommend it. So this is an acrylic painting and I'll kind of go over um, my process. So this is a painting, a snapping turtle, a common snapping turtle. I did, um, I did this last spring. Um, one of my favorite turtles, really wrinkly, friendly giants. Um, so I always paint, this is an acrylic painting. I always kind of, traditionally people paint from the background forward. I always kind of do the opposite. I start with the subject and then I go backwards. So I use a lot of like washes and layers to kind of build up tone and texture. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I don't have my hand in this one, but this, this painting, this turtle is uh, life size. And like I said, I love these turtles. If you, they, they look kind of scary. A lot of people are afraid of them, but they really avoid people. And if you ever see one walking, it's probably a female nesting. So there's my hand, so you can see kind of the, the scale of it. So that one, there's a lot of layers. It took a lot of time to do this one. It's pretty big. And there it is finished. So I don't know if you, if you haven't seen a snapping turtle walking, you should. It's like watching a dinosaur. They're very deliberate with each step. A big, like, big bag of wrinkles. Here's a painting I did a couple of years ago in progress. Um, this is Fern. She's a Galapagos tortoise, and she is a Ferdinand Island uh, tortoise, which was thought to be extinct for the past hundred years, and they rediscovered her, rediscovered one about two years ago. And here's another, this is an alligator snapping turtle, illustration I did for a sign that you can see on the right. Um, these look really scary too, really prehistoric animals, but they're really the, they, you know, the fish specialists, they eat fish. They have a little lure in their tongue to, to kind of lure them in. I, I don't know, the little, the box is kind of blocking it, but on the right, you can see the fish, the finished illustration. So the goal of this was to, um, this is a specific turtle and the sign was, is, well, went up uh, at the river where this turtle lives and kind of educate people who go there to the visitor center about uh, what's what's in the river and what these what these turtles do, and oh, do you want to get um, Polly? Here's some more of the process. One of my favorite turtles in New Hampshire, spotted turtle. Um, these are really beautiful little turtles, and if you ever see one, just help it along the way it's going. It's so tempting to want to take it, but it's so important not to because uh, like a female turtle can live her whole life laying, depending on the species, you know, hundreds of eggs and one or two of them will only make it to adulthood. So taking one from the wild is really devastating. But the process. So I always start with like a, a pencil drawing you can see in the background. And then I do the turtle or whatever the subject is. And then I start in the background. And then the finished. And when I was showing a picture of Eddie, my tortoise, I meant to, I meant to show this. If you can see me in the screen on the right, this is Polly. Uh, woo! I've had Polly for 26 years, so she's a little three-toed box turtle. So we've been we've been together for a long time. And I, you probably can't see how colorful she is, but she's really colorful on her neck. And, and a turtle like that can live over 100 years, so she's really young still. Put those away, they crawling around. So, like Susie mentioned, um, my first book was Freshwater Fish of the Northeast. I did this for my father. Uh, we illustrated uh, 61 different species of fish in this book. And, you know, we had a lot of fun doing it. We did a lot of fishing, we call them business trips. Um, one of the goals of this book was not just to do like the fish that people catch that you go out fishing for, 
the game fish, but with all the fish you might encounter when you're out. So we did fish that you catch fishing. We did fish that you can only catch with nets. And one of the fun things we did while we were working on this was a um, species contest. Me, here's some illustrations. Uh, so the goal was to catch the most species. And what we did was we both kept a journal and we took photographs and we recorded when, where we found these fish and we taped them all to the journal so that we could, we could prove to each other that we caught them if, if we weren't together. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. We had to do, we had to do things, techniques that we weren't used to and try different areas. And it was, it was a really fun, fun uh, activity for the book. And that, that's what the intro is all about in this book. So a lot of you might know the fish in the top left, a yellow perch. In the bottom right is a brook trout. And then the one on the left is a channel catfish, which are in New Hampshire. And then a long-eared sunfish in the top right. And here are some, these aren't from the book, but these are some fishy things. So I thought I'd tie them in. While I was on the subject, uh, these these are this one I just recently did. This is a new uh, design for a print for Orvis, a striped bass, and it's acrylic with a, a sketch of a lighthouse in Long Island, and a tarpon, and the sketch is uh, the Keys, which is the first place I ever saw a tarpon. I was snorkeling under the the Route One bridge and. And I was, I had my kayak tied to the a big pillar and I was swimming along the bottom and this big fish came by and he looked at me with his giant eye and I looked at him. I didn't know what he was. And it kind of scared me. And then he just kind of swam off and I found out what he was after the fact. So that's why the sketch is the setting where I saw him. And here's another, another trout. Um, in a brook, oh, oops, I'm going the wrong way. There it is, brook trout. So both these, if you can see in the sketch, the covered bridges are New Hampshire. They're both in the White Mountains. And they're both over the Swift River. And that's actually me on the bottom left. <laughs> I, I modeled for myself. <laughs> in my next book, The Snake and the Salamander, um, this came out, well, I think like three, four, four years ago. Um, yeah, and it, it has 83 species in it. I did this with Al Breisch, who is a herpetologist. He's retired now. He worked for the New York Fish and Wildlife. And so he, he did all the writing. He has a lot of really, really cool um, experience and personal stories that he tied into that. So it's not really a technical book. It's a book that uh, hurt people, reptile and amphibian people will like, but hopefully people who aren't those kind of people yet will like it too. So hopefully it will get them into it, you know, because education leads to conservation. So, and one of the things in this book is we didn't organize it by frogs, snakes, turtles, lizards. We did, we did it by habitat. So we have, um, I think there's 10 or 11, I can't remember offhand, different habitats. But for instance, like bogs or northeastern grasslands. So it's all the, the herbs that are found in that habitat. So the process, this book, like I said, it goes from Maine to Virginia. So there's a lot of animals in it. Um, I couldn't find all of them, obviously, but whenever I can, I always try to um, get my own reference and see the animals in person. So this right here is a gray tree frog. And these are around here in New Hampshire. I hear them all the time. I rarely see them because it's so well camouflaged. They're really beautiful kind of fat frogs. They're not, they're not little, right? They're, they're not tiny. They're not like a spring peeper. Here's a northern water snake. And if you've never seen the belly of one of these, it's beautiful. You can kind of see in that picture on the left. And these have really, really colorful patterns. These are really 
I see these a lot. These are fun. It's always fun looking for snakes. Susie knows that. And here's some spotted salamanders um, for you salamander people out there. <laughs> these are beautiful animals and we had so much fun last year doing the salamander brigades. Here's an American toad, which can live to be, you know, up to 30 years old, which people see these a lot. They never think how old this animal could be. And a uh, red spotted newt. So we see these a lot. You see them in ponds, um, but you also see the, the red eft, which is the stage before an adult on the top there. You see, see those a lot when it rains, they all come out crossing the roads or if you're hiking. Um, here's another illustration from it. A Eastern ribbon, ribbon snake. These are really beautiful, like harmless little snakes. They're, they're really slender. They have a really nice stripe that goes right down their back. I, well, I say, I think all snakes are beautiful, but this is a really, really colorful one. Um, and here's some spring peepers, which I can't wait to hear in the spring. I'm already tired of the winter. But um, these, these little ones, these, this illustration is a lot bigger than they actually are. They're tiny. All right, so turtles, like I mentioned, um, I'm really into turtles. A lot of my work revolves around turtles lately. And uh, I, I like turtles because I'll go on a little turtle rant because they're amazing. They're wonderful animals. Um, they're over 260 million years old. They're older than the dinosaurs. They've survived mass extinctions. Um, you can find them in the ocean. You can find them here in the Northeast. It's covered in snow right now. You can find them in rainforests in the desert. Um, they can, some of them can sprint 15 miles an hour. It's short burst. Um, some of them can climb. Uh, they can breathe through their through their bum, <laughs> which is pretty amazing. Uh, the first the first animals to ever orbit the moon and come back to Earth were turtles, which a lot of people don't know. Two Russian tortoises. And uh, what else can they do? Um, well, some of them can live to be over two hundred years, which is wild. So and they're really important animals, and they've been around forever. And and uh, they, they really deserve our respect. Um, there's, I think there's over 360 species, I, I think around 360, and 60% of those right now are either threatened or endangered because people. So this is, a, this is an acrylic painting of a radiated tortoise, the one in the, the first picture I, I showed you. And these are Blanding's turtles, which are found in New Hampshire. Sorry, I'm thirsty. Um, so these are really, I keep saying this, but these are really beautiful animals. Uh, these have a really bright yellow chin and they have speckles all over their shell, which is kind of like a army helmet. Um, they're, they're pretty big turtles. This painting I did a few years ago and it just won a, an award, an international wildlife competition called the Golden Turtle. So it's pretty, pretty fitting. <laughs> but these are, you might come across one of these in New Hampshire. If you ever do, take a picture of it and then move it in the direction it's going. Uh, on the left is a, a diamondback terrapin. It's a brackish water turtle. It's found from the Cape all the way down to the Gulf. And it, there's a really wide uh, variety of patterning in, you know, speckles and spots and coloration. Oh, and on the right is a my favorite turtle. I don't know, it's cut off for me, his head, but you can see his legs in a shell. Um, <laughs> this is a wood turtle, and they're they have really bright red orange legs and uh, neck, and their shell has. Uh, it's really sculpted and it has almost like rays of light. It, it looks like if you look at a, a, a brook and you see a, a, a rock underneath the water and you see like the sun dispersing, that's kind of what it looks like. And that's where they're found. They're found in, 
in cold, cold water, like trout quality streams. All right, so being a turtle artist um, has given me some really cool opportunities. There's not many turtle artists out there, but you can do it. <laughs> and um, two, about two years ago, right around this time, I went to uh, Madagascar and I participated in the Turtle Survival Alliance's Radiated Tortoise Surveys. Uh, the Turtle Survival Alliance uh, is dedicated to tortoise, turtle and tortoise conservation around the world. So check them out, look them up. I think it's um, turtlesurvivalalliance.org. Pretty sure that's it. Um, but anyway, a year previous to me going, a, these, these tortoises are critically endangered. And a year previous to, to me going there, a house was found with 11, a little over 11,000 confiscated turtles in it that had been poached. And then six months after that, another house was found with 7,000. So uh, the goal is to get them all back in the wild, obviously, but you can't just, you can't just put them back because they could get taken again. So TSA, Turtle Survival Alliance, is where they work with locals and villagers um, to kind of educate them and talk with them um, and find suitable release spots. So that's what we were doing on the surveys. In the survey. Here's one. Cute little guy, isn't he? So each, each, um, well, you can see why they're critically endangered. People, I mean, they're, they're poached for pets. They're probably the most beautiful in the world, I, I would say. Um, but each one has that little ray, the radiated um, pattern, and it's almost like a fingerprint. So each, each tortoise can be identified by his or her marks. And this is this isn't a full grown. This is a small one. So when I got to Madagascar, uh, these are found in the south, in the desert, in the spiny forest. Um, so there's a Turtle Survival Alliance has a, a location called the Tortoise Conservation Center, C T C C, and that's where the housing. They have a few of them. That's where I think like eight thousand at the time were being cared for and protected. So. I went in the rainy season, and this is one of the roads, I guess you call it a road, <laughs> um, on the way out to TCC. It's a pretty wild place. It's a really wild place. There's uh, some, some locals, and then there's a zebu pulling a cart. And there's a gate to TCC. It looks like, uh, it's kind of like Jurassic Park. <laughs> You can see there's two little tor iron tortoises on the on the fence there. But Madagascar is like nowhere else. It's it's hot. The insects are really loud, and it's spiny forest. Everything has spines, like everything. Uh, even even the leaves on plants have spines. You're constantly pulling spines out of your your legs as you're walking around. And this, the heat was really intense. There's no escaping it. Here's my little tent that I lived in. It's like a coffin. <laughs> it was probably like a hundred degrees in it every night. And I never really got used to it, but I got used to being sweaty and dirty because everyone else was. So my first night I found this um, Madagascan ground boa outside my tent. Really exciting. He was pretty thick sliding along. Here's some other animals besides tortoises, a chameleon. I'm not sure what that spider is, but he was really impressive. And at TCC, at the time at least, this was a kitchen. And those are little pieces of meat hanging in the background. <laughs> um, funny story, like, uh, it was raw meat and so it got maggots all over it and one night a bunch of ants came on the little rope they walked down the rope and they carried off all the maggots <laughs> and so that was a big celebration the next morning sounds delicious doesn't it and here are some of the tortoises there that they're protecting um as you can see they like to eat and they're really curious investigating my feet and I think that one on the left is eating a melon. It's 
So that's at TCC. From there, I went to the field um, and I went to, to do the surveys. I was at two different sites. I think we spent about three or four days at each site. Um, and we would, we would weigh them. You can see on the right, uh, then we would measure them. We would record how many, uh, count them, mark them. Uh, what else did we do? We, we um, recorded the vegetation that, that they were found around. And it's, here's a couple really, I mean, they're really beautiful tortoises, it, especially if you look at the one on the left, I mean, you can see where it gets its name radiated like the sun. There's a cute little hatchling that we found, one of many, but see how little he is. You see how different he looks when he's little, his pattern. And there's me with a tortoise, pretty big one. And that's a picture of the spiny forest on the left, kind of like a Dr. Seuss forest with the funny looking trees. Like I said, everything had spines. It was, it was a really wild place. It's, it's really unique. Um, it was really an amazing experience to be there and, and to, to be doing this, to be, be able to see the tortoises in the wild. Like I said, they're critically endangered. My dog's barking. Um, it's all right. I don't know if you can hear that. They're singing. Um, so there's me in my tent again. That was the last site I was at. Um, uh, they'll stop. You want to quiet them down? <laughs> um, that's all my stuff. It was, this is an octopus tree. So Sai, I think you're watching. You like this. These trees are really impressive. They're really cool. They're covered in these little spines and tiny little leaves. And you can see why they're called an octopus tree. They have all these arms coming out. It was a taboo. You're not supposed to pee near within like 100 feet of one. Or you get in trouble. Can't remember the consequence, I think. You might go with someone a goat or something like that. You can see how sweaty I am <laughs> in that picture. And that was a good picture. And this is my crew that I was with. And then there's two guys peeking over everyone's shoulder in the background. They were guides for that site. Um, I have a Northeast turtle shirt on to represent our turtles. You see how kind of small everyone was. So from, from my time there, my experience there, I did this painting. And like I said, I was there in the rainy season, so I saw a lot of plants and flowers that normally aren't out because it's so dry. Uh, and I, these are tortoises I saw while I was there, specific tortoises. These are plants that I saw. And I did this print and all the uh, proceeds from this, it's a limited edition print and they all go towards the Turtle Survival Alliance. So they go towards turtle and tortoise conservation. And this is a Pyxis uh, spider tortoise, which is in the same habitat. It's also critically endangered. It's a tiny little tortoise, really small, uh, hard to find. Um, for a lot of reasons, they're critically endangered and also they really blend in well. And I did this painting, uh, I just raffled it off for uh, Turtle Survival Alliance. So all the money raised from this goes to them. And they're really, they're really cute little tortoises. And here is uh, my, my illustration from the uh, from the one on the right was used on the staff shirts. Oops. So, turtles. My new book. My I'm working right now with Cy Montgomery on two turtle books. So it's been we've been 
in the year of COVID, we've been immersed in the world of turtles and it's been wonderful. Uh, this is Fire Chief in these pictures. He's one of our favorites we work with. And as you can see, he's super friendly. He's a snapping turtle. He's a gentle giant. He's a wild turtle. It just shows you how snapping turtles have this reputation, but it's not true. And he got run over. And so we're strengthening, we're working on strengthening his back legs. But he's a real good looking guy. And so doing, doing this book, we've been in the world of turtles, we've been doing we did. We got to do sea turtle rescue. Kemp's Ridley's this um, winter at the Cape. We've been doing um, nesting protection. Um, we've been doing rehab. So it's really been a, a really fun time so far. And I won't do too many details about it, but here are some cute little turtles. The one that you can see is egg tooth. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but right there. That's a spotted turtle. And the one on the right, if the box is in the way, um, you can see a little eye peeking out. It's a painted turtle of his shell. We can see your mouse, Matt, so feel free you to can? Cool. Um, here's, here's the chief again. As you can see, he's pretty big. He's pretty handsome. <laughs> and that's the most recent project, and I'm super excited about it. It's a lot of fun so far. Um, it's fun working with Sai. It's always fun working with turtles, and you know, my art is my way of sharing my passion, my interests, and and hopefully to inspire others. So, um, with that, I guess I'll. If you are getting any questions, I can start answering some of those. Wow, Matt, thank you so much. That was so so cool just to see your artwork and hear your stories and to know that that really like you this has been in your heart ever since you came into this world and your artwork really yeah. reflects that it's really great um there are some questions first people want to know if um they think that fire chief will ever be able to be released um that's a good question we don't know we hope so uh he he got run over, like I said, and he has some spinal problems. So his back legs aren't really strong. And if he can strengthen them to a point, then he could be released. Um, so that's, we'll see, but hopefully. Does anybody know about how old he is? He's probably around 50-ish. Wow, he's a yeah. big boy. That's so he's great. been around for a while. And he actually has, uh, on his face, he has a little, um, you can see where he has a previous injury that he healed on his own and on his carapace too. So turtles are tough. They can survive really devastating injuries that you, you would think that there's no way, you know? Wow, oh wow, the questions are coming in fast. What's the difference yeah. between turtles and tortoises? Oh, good question. So a tortoise is a turtle. Um, it's a land turtle. So all tortoises are turtles. Not all turtles are tortoises. <laughs> so basically it's a land, it's a land turtle. Cool. Yeah, it has oh. uh, like elephant feet. <laughs> One other quick question about Fire Chief, because he's yes. so compelling. Um, how he's much cool. does he weigh? Oh, he he weighs right now. I we weighed him Friday, last Friday. I think he was at like 32 pounds. Wow. And he's he is gaining weight. So He's starting to fatten up a little bit. That's great. If people wanted to volunteer to help turtles, can anyone volunteer with, let's say, TSA or the Turtle Rescue League? Or do you have any advice if people want to find ways to help these animals? Yeah, there's, there's, there are volunteer opportunities out there. Um, I know TSA has a lot of um, outreach programs and programs to get communities involved. Um, if you find a turtle, one way to help. If you find one that's injured, you can call and bring it to a rehabber, like like uh, TRL, uh, Turtle Rescue League, um, places like that. Um, you can you know you can ask them and if, if they're looking for volunteers. But there are there's always places to volunteer and and, and help out. Great. 
That's exciting. I think you're inspiring people. So some people are really curious about your the medium that you use, acrylic. Are all is are all your artworks done in acrylic or do you use any other medium? Yeah, no, they're all acrylic. Yep. Great. And then the there was a follow-up question about what kind of acrylic paint paint do you actually use? Do you have a specific type that you like? Your paintings are so vivid. This is from Emily. She says, beautiful work and incredible technique. What kind of acrylic paint and mediums do you use? Um, uh, Liquitex, Liquitex, here's a picture. These are my paints, I have them right next to me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I use, uh, it, there's different types of paint. There's a student level artist, and then there's a like professional level where the pigments, they're more expensive, but the pigments are brighter. So that's what I use, and I I paint um, really detailed, as you can tell, but like really thin washes to kind of build up textures and layers and tones and and um, kind of thin to thick painting. So cool! I yeah. think you you've inspired um, an audience member. Zenia is wondering if you ever do lessons. She loves um, your technique and loves to do nature and drawing. Do you ever offer lessons or teach people? I, I haven't done lessons. I did a, um, a live paint along, which I might do again. I did that last spring. So what I did was I did a drawing that people could download and then I painted it on Facebook Live. I, I might do something like that. The last one I did, I did it upside down, but I promise this time I won't. <laughs> Matt, if you do that again, the Harris Center would love to co-sponsor that with you. We work with a lot of um, ki kids that I know would love that, that opportunity. It might give you a bigger audience. So keep us in mind. Yeah. It'd be really cool. Um, so here's a really interesting question. Um, and I know that size on this um, too, and you might want to pipe in too. This is from Susan. She's wondering if you have any theories on why spotted turtles and spotted salamanders share similar patterning. Um, well, it probably, I mean, if you've ever seen one in the wild, they actually blend in really well. So it, it, it you know, it's something to do with that. They, they both evolved, you know, similar patterns because they work. That's great. I don't yeah. know if, if Cy wants to add anything to that or you well, can. Too. I've seen spotted turtles and you, you see them and they have such the black and they have such like vivid, bright yellow spots and you wouldn't think they would ever blend in, but then you put one in, I've seen them in the wild in really dark pools of water, vernal pools and stuff, and they really, they're really hard to see. So yeah, it actually does work. That's cool. Side just did respond in her, um, in the chat. She said, whale sharks are like this too. They have the similar patterning. So very cool. Um, hey, um, Miles just wants you to know, Matt, that if you want, you could stop sharing your screen and then we can see you better. And um, right. there was a request if you could try sharing Polly again, because some people didn't get to see Polly or if there's any other turtles you want to share. Yeah, go get it. Yeah, we'll bring some more turtles down. <laughs> how, how many, tell us how many turtles you have at your home and why you have them. Where did it come from? Uh, well, this year we started out with four and we now have 11. Um, hold on a minute. Here's Polly. So, She's got a really loose sweater on her neck right now. Can you see? <laughs> so Matt's showing Polly. If you're having trouble seeing, you can put Matt on speaker view and that's up at the little box um, above all the little boxes and Miles, do you have a better way of describing how to put them on speaker view? I just spotlighted Matt, so it should be big for everybody. Oh, perfect. I, I see that. <laughs> Good job. They yeah. want to see your dogs too. This is like show and tell. Here, here is, um, here's Eddie. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, she's, she's getting big. She's, what? I know how big she's getting big. Um, well, these tortoises are really wonderful, beautiful tortoises, but they're not, people shouldn't get these, uh, especially in the Northeast. Um, they people, they reptile show solemn as hatchlings. So you don't realize this is the third largest in the world. So they're really not good Northeast turtles, unless you have a lot of space like we do uh, for them to grow and the, the house them. But as you can see, she's a real pretty, 
She's a real beautiful lady. Matt, what um, Miles noticed that he um, Eddie has like kind of notches, like that under. She's kind yeah. of got two notches. What's that about? Those are, uh, I believe, they're called the gular scutes, the plastron, and a lot of species use them for like jousting. No. So some species, like the plowshare, they have they have ones that come way, which are also fun. They come way out like that. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Thank you, Matt. Super yeah. special. Um, a quick question I forgot to ask, and this is from Brett, um, yeah. who noticed that in the picture um, with the um, radiated tortoises in Madagascar when you were at um, TSA, there were they were all together. Are they social, or was that just because they were kind of in a captive area? Yeah, they're not, but that they're at that center. They have uh, like over eight thousand that have been confiscated. So they they have them in big, you know, enclosures. So normally they're not like that. That's great. And do you? They don't, they don't run in packs. So that would be kind of neat. <laughs> <laughs> I love don't. that. Yeah. That'd be so cool. Um, do you have any tips for people if they wanted to find ways to make their own backyard and their own community more turtle friendly? What can we do to help turtles? Uh, awareness is a really good thing in um, crossing them. If you see them crossing the road, obviously turtles evolved, you know, 260 million years ago. So they're not, they're not ready for cars. So if you see one moving across the direction it's going, um, yeah, just, just protecting their habitat and I don't know, I think you have any ideas? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, I know we, we, um, we are having hopefully a person come and talk about turtles, um, in the summer and I know fishing game is doing a lot with improving turtle nesting habitat area yeah. by That's kind amazing. of scraping and giving them um, kind of reclaiming old, cutting down vegetation from old sand pits and making it places like that. And maybe Brett, um, Brett Thielen is on tonight's call and she manages our salamander brigades. And I always turn to her when there's good questions about um, turtle habitat and turtles. Brett, do you wanna pipe in on anything? Sorry, I don't have my video on because I'm watching on a big screen so I could see the turtles and the art better. But yeah, I mean, I think one of, I totally agree with the road crossings are such a big con conservation concern for our local turtles in the nesting season and for our migratory amphibians. And also I think the answer always is how can you help wildlife is protect land as well as habitat protection because without habitat, there's no wildlife. And so um, that's one way to do it is to support organizations that do that. Well said, Brett. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hey, Matt, uh, Susan has a question about your process, and she's wondering if you um, work on multiple paintings at a time, or are you really like specifically focusing on one thing? And um, kind of how, how are you managing to make a living as an artist? That can be hard. So if you could yeah. share a little bit about that. Um, I So uh, I usually work on one big painting at a time. I, well, I always have a lot of different projects going, but when I get a, a big painting going, I really focus in on that. Um, and what was the other question about my process? Was there a question about my process? Just a question kind of about how are you managing making a living as an artist? Not uh, all people yeah, are lucky enough to do that. It, it's not, it's tough to, to, to start out, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a turtle artist and it's actually, it's an actual thing. <laughs> Um, it's working out. I do a lot of prints. I sell a lot of prints along with my artwork and then um, obviously the books. Um, so I have a lot of different ways of, of making money. I do, like I said, prints. I do like the Orvis stuff I'm doing. Um, so the turtle books, um, originals, what else? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I'm just going to give a plug for Matt's website. It's um, Stone Ridge Studios and you can read all about um, more about Matt and his adventures. You can see his incredible um, artwork and you can purchase things there as well. And his books are available. You can get your books at Toadstool local bookstores, independent booksellers, and also um, on 
places like Amazon and any other places you want to tell people to look for your books? Um, yeah, if you if you go to my my website is mpattersonart.com and you can see a lot of stuff on there and I have a link to my Etsy. Um, but yeah, the Toadstool has has my books and you know local places like that. It's great. And one day when we can like reopen again, the Harris Center yeah. is um, scheduled to have Matt um, have a showing up at the Harris Center. Um, and so you might be able to come and see his artwork in person in the Harris Center's Babbitt room. And I've been at a few art openings with Matt um, of his artwork and sometimes he brings Eddie with him too. Yeah, I, <laughs> um, I've had some pre-COVID, I had open studios and I would tie a balloon to Eddie. <laughs> let her walk around so that no one would step on her but yeah oh, that's good one day that's great and um we would love to know about um if you have any favorite um turtles that you like to paint like what's your favorite like species mm -hmm. um, wood turtles and for tortoises radiated wow why yeah. tell us a little bit about that um, I, well, wood turtles, I love wood turtles. I've, I've grown up being in New Hampshire, seeing wood turtles and they're so colorful and their texture, their shell, um, their pattern and the same with radiated tortoises. They're so colorful and they have their markings. It's beautiful. So I love doing all those little details, all the scales and all the, the wrinkles. Oh, and I like, uh, I like painting uh, snapping turtles too. <laughs> For that reason. <laughs> turtles, I like painting turtles. A turtle artist, we love it. I want to say um, that Matt also sells bandanas, which he's sporting one um, of his bandanas and um, sweatshirts and t-shirts. They all make wonderful gifts. And again, his his books, um, the freshwater fish of New, uh, Northeast. Northeast, yeah. Yeah, my dad loves that book. And it was a great dad's yeah. present um, for Father's Day and the, um, Salamander and snake book is also a wonderful gift, especially if you have someone curious about those animals. Um, it's not a field guide. It really is more um, stories. Yeah, it's not technical. So yeah. you don't need a dictionary to read it. It's great. So I think that might be it other than to say, wow, Matt, thank you so much for sharing your artwork, your uh -huh. process, the stories and your turtles. And thanks for Erin being your helper tonight. <laughs> if yeah. you were at the Harris Center, we would stand up and give you a big standing ovation. She did a great job. Thank you so much. Great, thanks. You're welcome. And thank everybody for coming out tonight to hear this incredible